And now I'd like to welcome to the stage the person who brings Intelligence Squared to the US to the United States and to Aspen across the United States. It's, it's starter and founder and chairman, Robert Rosencrantz. Hey, Bob. How are you? Normally, um, before our debates in New York, uh, Bob and I chat for just a couple of minutes about uh, a sort of framing of the evening that's ahead for us. And in, in this case, the basic question I want to ask you is, you know, the, the language, the US has no dog in the fight, could be interpreted a lot of different ways. What, is, what do we intend by that language, this debate to be about? Well, well, let me start off by saying what we don't intend. Uh, this is not a debate about whether Syria is consequential. It's clearly uh, Iran's sole ally. It's a site of a humanitarian disaster of huge proportions. There would be no debate about that. Uh, so what put me in mind of this language, the U.S. has no dog in the fight in Syria, was a, a dinner I attended in Singapore. And my dinner partner was the former head of the KGB. Uh, <laughs> Ambassador Chubnikov, and I was charming, <laughs> charming guy, uh, very well informed. <laughs> so so um, I said, "What are you guys doing in Syria? Uh, you can't uh, like the idea of an Islamist regime like uh, the Iranians getting stronger. What are you doing there?" And he said, "Look, we don't like Assad any better than you do." But we think that the alternative to Assad is at best an Islamist state and at worst a new Al-Qaeda stronghold. So we think Assad is the best of a bad lot of choices. So the Russians have picked their side. They've picked their guy. Yes, they picked their guy and he seems to be doing better with their support. A few days later, I happened to have dinner with Henry Kissinger. And I essentially posed the same question to him. And his view was, unless the United States sees a clear way to influence an outcome and a clear way to make that outcome better suited to our national security interests, we should stay out. And in a sense, this language, the US has no dog in the fight in Syria, is asking whether those two opinions are correct or whether there is an identifiable outcome uh, that we can get behind that serves our interests uh, at least reasonably well and is worth a commitment of US uh, uh, military uh, involvement or other kinds of involvement to try to bring it about. You know, Bob, we do a lot of debates where, where it's, there's a clear dividing line between the two sides. We, you know, one that comes to mind is ban college football. That was easy, yes or no. <laughs> this one is one of those debates that's full of of nuance and gradation. Well, that's, that's absolutely right, uh, John. I mean, in a debate like this, nobody's gonna say we should be all in with all the military resources, full on involved, boots on the ground to try to create an outcome. And nobody's gonna say this is a matter of no real consequence to the United States, we can kind of ignore it. So it's all gonna be matters of degree. Uh, but uh, I think uh, ultimately there are going to be real differences between these sides and their discussion is going to be very illuminating. And robust. And let's bring on our robust debaters now. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our debaters to the stage. Thank you, Bob Rosenkrantz. Thank you. Thank you. And this is one of those times. May I invite one more round of applause, please? Thank you. There are times when, for a president, there is nothing to debate. We are attacked, you go to war. Pearl Harbor, September 2001. Other people's wars, those are trickier. The US intervened to put an end to the killing in Bosnia and was glad that it did. The U.S. was passive about mass killing in Rwanda and ended up regretting that. So now there is Syria, and it is a mess, a death toll that is crossing into six figures, millions of people homeless, a dictator who is suspected of using chemical weapons against his own people, and fighters, thousands of them from all over the world, descending on the chaos with a vision of creating an Islamist state. 
So does it behoove the U.S. urgently and immediately to get more involved in Syria, up to and possibly including military action? Or is the wiser thing for the U.S. when it appears there are no good options to stay back and maybe this time let somebody else mostly sort out the problem? Now that sounds like a debate, so let's have it. Yes or no to this statement. The U.S has no dog in the fight in Syria. A debate from Intelligence Squared US. I'm John Donvan. We are in Aspen and on the stage of the Pepke Auditorium at the Aspen Institute and in partnership with the Aspen Strategy Group. We have four superbly qualified debaters, two against two, who will be arguing out this motion for and against the US has no dog in the fight in Syria. As always, our debates go in three rounds and then the audience votes to choose the winner, and only one side can win. Let's meet our debaters. Our motion is the US has no dog in the fight in Syria. And first, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Graham Allison. Graham, you are the director of Harvard's uh, Belfer Center for Science and International Affairs. You served in the Reagan and the Clinton administrations. You were Assistant Secretary of Defense uh, under Clinton. As a youth, before all of that, you wrote a book called Essence of Decision on the Cuban Missile Crisis that forever afterwards changed the way that people understand decision making. You also, as a youth at age 31, made it to full professor at Harvard. So Graham Allison, what took you so long? <laughs> Well, I was young and even more foolish. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Graham Allison. And Graham, your partner tonight in this debate is? Is the handsome Richard Falkenrath. Ladies and gentlemen, Richard Falkenrath. Richard, you're also taking the position that the U.S. has no dog in the fight in Syria. You are a principal of the Chertoff Group. You're an adjunct senior fellow at the Council on Foreign Relations. You served in several capacities during the George W. Bush administration, including Deputy Homeland Security Advisor, Deputy Assistant to the President. Uh, Rich, you recently told Bloomberg, and I quote, the cold hard facts are that as a global economic matter, Syria just doesn't matter that much. That is about as blunt as it gets. Is, is blunt your style? Yes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Richard Falconrath. Our motion is the U.S. has no dog in the fight in Syria. And here to argue against the motion, it means that they do believe that the U.S. has a dog in the fight in Syria, I'd like to introduce and welcome Nicholas Burns. Ladies and gentlemen, Nicholas Burns. Nick, you're a professor at the Harvard Kennedy School and director of the Aspen Strategy Group. Uh, you're a career foreign service officer, done a lot of stuff. Under Secretary of State for Political Affairs from 2005 to 2006, lead U.S. negotiator on Iran's nuclear program, ambassador to NATO, ambassador to Greece, special assistant to President Clinton, director of Soviet affairs under President H.W. Bush. Back in 1990, you were stationed in Mauritania as an intern. So you are here to tell the young people of America that a good internship can get you someplace. <laughs> <laughs> in 1980, I was the lowest ranking person in the history of the United States government in Mauritania, but it was a great experience. Thank you. <laughs> Nick Burns, ladies and gentlemen. And Nick, your partner is? Ambassador Nigel Scheinwald. Ladies and gentlemen, Sir Nigel Scheinwald. Sir Nigel, you have agreed that while you're here in the colonies and for purposes of this debate, you will be Nigel. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you are also arguing against the motion that the U.S. has no dog in the fight. It means you think the U.S. does have a dog in this fight. You were British ambassador to the United States. You were a foreign policy and defense advisor to Prime Minister Tony Blair. And also, as U.K. ambassador and permanent rep to the European Union, in 2006, you went to Syria. You held secret talks with President Bashar al-Assad. Guardian said you offered Assad a choice, continue an alliance with Iran or enjoy a normalization of relations with the West. He made his choice, we know that. Well, we want to know from you, what's the guy like? <laughs> Not something I want to do every week, I think. Yeah. Um, but it was, a, it was a very tough conversation, and I'll talk a bit more about it later. All right, thanks very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Nigel Scheinwald. 
Our motion is the U.S. has no dog in the fight in Syria. At this Intelligence Squared U.S. debate, you, our live audience here in Aspen, act as our judges. By the time the debate has ended, you will have been asked to vote twice, once before the debate and once again at its conclusion. The team whose numbers have changed the most in terms of your vote, in terms of percentage points, will be declared our winner. So let's go to our preliminary vote. There's a keypad at your seat. And you want to pay attention to numbers one, two, and three. Uh, I'm gonna give a visual on this because this, uh, this is a tricky motion because of the negative in it. If you feel that the US has no dog in the fight in Syria, if you're with these guys right now, that means you push number one. If you disagree with the motion that the US has no dog in the fight in Syria, in other words, you think it does have a fight, in this, with, in, in fight with Syria, you're voting with these guys, that's pushing number two. And if you are undecided, which is a perfectly honorable position in this one, uh, push number three. You can ignore the other keys, and you can also, if you push the wrong one, just correct yourself, and the system will lock in the last vote. Once we lock out the, the vote, uh, we have instantaneous results. It means at the end of the debate, second vote, within a minute or two, we'll be able to tell you who's won the debate according to our rules, which once again is the team that has picked up the most percentage points from its starting position. So on to round one. <laughs>